I think the two last, the two final songs to be written for this, My Truth, was My Little Empire and this. If you're alright, this show will be, will be next. I think that. Maybe nobody loved it. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps actually. But anyway, I remember we were travelling over to France to Chateau, uh, Chateau Rougemont in, uh, in Normandy, Mike Hedges' place, um, to do the second session of This Is My Truth. And um, we got over there, and I think I'd been given the lyric, um, but uh, two weeks previously, so I brought it over in my luggage with me. And uh, I'd been trying to write it, um, but not, it, it, was, it wasn't one of those processes where it was fraught with ten tension and failure, like a lot of songs are. Um, to be honest, we thought we had the album in the bag, we had Tsunami, we, yeah. we had Stole the Sun, we had the Everlasting, so it wasn't that kind of highly pressurised. Yeah, and I can actually say, with the lyric, I didn't recognise the, the weight of the lyrics, I didn't recognise the prescience of them, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And, um, I just kind of, perhaps that took the pressure off trying to write the, the tune. And uh, there, was a, there was like a dorm room in Chateau Rougemont uh, where when people came over, like Martin, our manager, and record company and stuff, they would stay in this dorm room. And I just sat in there one morning and just absentmindedly just, just played my acoustic, my J45 acoustic kind of thing. And um, just, it seemed like a really simple song. There were five, six chords tops in it, I think. And um, I just kind of went and played it downstairs when Nick and Sean were downstairs and they were like oh that's cool that's nice that's good and then we finished that session in France and, and then we booked a session with Dave Erringer over in Rockfield um, uh, kind of he's perhaps he seemed to recognize that it was it could go on the record it wouldn't just be a classics legendary Manix B-side which we always always wanted one of those those moments to happen because B-sides were important to us and um, and as soon as we did the rhythm track and as soon as kind of we um, put the acoustic on and a guide vocal on it, kind of recognised that perhaps it had a chance to go on the record. It's one of my favourite moments ever, actually, because me and Sean were doing the rhythm track live together. We were cut into tape, you know, it was old school tape. And Sean just couldn't wait to get away as I could, and we thought it was a pretty sloppy, a sloppy take, but. Um, turned out to be really brilliant. It's one of our best kind of rhythm sections or feel. And um, the lyric was written in Barcelona initially. Like a lot of my best words seem to come from other places at times. And um, there's a lot of words in it, actually. It's one of my favorite opening lines ever to any number one. You know, the future teaches you to be alone. How kind of prophetic I was 20 years ago to write that in a- The present to be afraid and cold. Yes, indeed. Well, Wiz, back in the day when um, video budget budgets were as much as you have to make a TV series today, um, I just talked to him really just about Stanley Kubrick, just the uh, Space Odyssey and just the way uh, Kubrick films, uh, the glacial power that some of his movies have and um, the sci-fi, the kind of analog science fiction and um, he had he said yeah I've got this idea of of Hot Wheels with blood running down it <laughs> so I couldn't quite see at the time but it absolutely worked perfectly and um, we also had to get lots of well we should have all had prosthetic masks but in the end we nominated James yeah to be the only one that did turn into some kind of mutant um, but he, he did do drama so you know I got drama all level he was into that the <laughs> I was gonna be that I was oh. My other kind of main ambition, aside from being managed, was to be the Welsh Tim Roth. So kind of like a, perhaps it paid off just for one video. Yeah, it is a brilliant video. You know, it's just, I remember going to the edit and just thinking, you know, it's just the vividness of it. It's just staggering. And, uh, nothing, when a video is a beautiful fit, you know, when everything illustrates you, the words, the music and the visuals, then there's not many better feelings.